Hello and welcome to Lloyd Doll House. We have our bed and we have our mattress and today we have to get started working on the sheets. The sheets might not be something that shows but we know that we want to do it just like a regular bed would be. I will be using this little piece of white fabric and I'm going to try two different styles. My set of sheets will be two rectangles one for the bottom sheet, the one that will cover the mattress, and one for the people who sleep in the bed to cover themselves. The uh, rectangles are going to be six and a half by seven and three quarters, each one of them. I don't think they had fitted sheets back then, so we're not going to do that. So this is my six and a half. And then this will be seven and three quarters. Okay, right here, we're leaving enough allowance for the, the hemming, and we are also leaving enough allowance for the drop. So this is a perfect size. I, after cutting my two sheets, I have to save this because these are going to be for, to um, cover the pillows to make the pillows and also for pillowcases. And I'm gonna do two styles here for you to choose. About an inch away from the edge, I'll be pulling out two strands of thread, just two. So here's what I have pulled out. That's exactly what I was going for. There's no reverse side on this fabric, so it really doesn't matter which way I do the folding, but this is what I would like to do. Fold it one time, fold it a second time, just so that it runs right next to the threads that I removed, and then do my stitching. I have secured my, my fold while I do the stitching. So the stitching is very simple. I'll go in, make sure that I hit the target area, which is the area where I remove the, the threads. And repeat the same stitch many, many times until I get to the end. Hopefully it will make it look like something that was done with a little bit of care. And this is the last stitch. Finish it in the reverse side. I'm working on the hemming of the sheet. I pin it around two folds of the fabric. And so the pins, because the folds are so tiny, they want to become undone and the pins will keep them in place. When I get to this area, then I just remove it.
for this second I'm gonna try a scallop stitch on my sewing machine they're finished now ready to be ironed this is my pretend ironing board and this is the sheet that I sewed by hand I have to get rid of this crease lines here so I'm using a damp little um, piece of cloth and I'm going to iron it until all of those creases disappear we want a nice crisp sheet for the bed This is called the smallest iron in the world, but I don't know how true that could be. I think I have seen some smaller ones. This one gets hot enough to get the job done right here for what I need. And I'm going to do the fold that's going to be on the bed because if I don't do it now it's a little it's a little too crisp and it won't let me do it well let's look at the finished product we have our bed and our mattress. This sheet was made from fabric that was left over from making masks, but still brand new. For it to stay put on the bed, we actually had to use the handy press and make very sharp creases on the sides here for it to stay, to remain um, tucked in and for the sides to go down and not extend outward. This is the top sheet and this was sewn by hand but still looks pretty brand new. Now, another option, I found material from a very old t-shirt. This is cotton and I used the sewing machine to do the scallop stitch. And this one, it's much more manageable. It didn't require such a precise ironing for it to stay in place. And this would be the top sheet. Although I may iron it, but it looks so much softer to the point that if um, a person was to lay down here, it wouldn't be very stiff. But this one looks much prettier this one looks more practical so it's all a matter of choice you guys thank you so much for watching and stay with us as we continue to work on the bedroom of this beautiful dollhouse have a nice day